Well, thank you very much. Uh, Samari, Dwayne Reese, hello everybody, I am Reese, and as Heather said, I'm here to talk to you today about how to integrate your GDPR features uh, that are in WordPress into your project. So first of all, to begin with, I am not a lawyer. I am not a lawyer, I'm never pretended to be a lawyer, I've never acted as a lawyer. Um, I did date one once. <laughs> I, did, I, did, I did date one one for about six months, but apart from that, I have no experience of any body in the legal profession or myself. So, what I am is I am a plugin developer, and in, 20, in 2009, I built a plugin called WP Mod Capture. Basically, what it does is it allows you to put into uh, your site um, your name and an email box, and it sends an email saying, "Do you want to subscribe to my newsletter?" Um, they then click yes, it saves the email address and the name to the database and you can then export and put it into something like MailChimp or something to send email. As you haven't probably worked out by now, my plugin is designed to collect data so I had to comply with GDPR. And GDPR came about in um, late May so I left it really 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 late and in early May I began working on my own solution. My own solution was basically have a privacy policy box in the back end of my plugin. You could copy and paste from the privacy policy box into your privacy policy. And you could also uh, export and delete data based on email addresses. It worked. It did work. But it wasn't really very robust. So 16th of May 2018, it was Manchester WordPress user group. And Heather came down and gave a talk on the work that she'd been working on uh, with the privacy team. And it was amazing. It was like, oh my goodness, this is like everything which I have been doing as a plugin developer. And I had to kind of make a decision. And I made a decision there and then to basically scrap what was effectively two weeks worth of work, um, most of it scrapped, and he decided to integrate with WordPress's privacy features. The reason for it was twofold. Um, first of all, from a first of all from a, um, a developer standpoint, it was far easier for me to maintain because rather than just me maintaining it, I had a large uh, WordPress community who would be maintaining those tools, and um, it was also better for the users because rather than going to the users and going right, okay, if you need to do a GDPR export or do a GDPR request, you need to go here. Oh yeah, except for my plugin where you need to go here. Um, so you need to do two. We can just train the user to kind of go to one place, do one GDPR request and go from there. So that was May 16th. May 17th, WordPress 4.9.6 was released. Um, it, it was classed as a security release, but <clears throat> probably should have been a minor release because of the amount of features that it added. Um, I'm not going to mention the G word, but there's all sorts of reasons behind WordPress making it 4.9.6 instead of 4.10, which it should have been. But it wasn't automatically updated um, initially, but um, eventually it was. Um, once they did a few checks to make sure that it was all okay. The 4.9.6 had a number of privacy features. Um, it had a privacy policy creator, a data exporter, and a data eraser. Um, it did have also a lot more features uh, that we're not going to talk about in this talk, such as like if you leave a comment, you can choose whether to keep your name and email address in the cookies, in the comment box by sending the cookie. Um, but we're not going to talk about those, but they're all there. But for the purposes of the next 15 to 20 minutes, we're going to be talking about these features and how to integrate them with your project. So the first thing is a privacy policy uh, creator. When you go to settings and then privacy, um, you can choose a privacy policy page on your site. This can either be one you've already written, or it can be one that exists, um, that you haven't written, but you can create a brand new page that um, is treated as your privacy policy page. What happens is when you kind of create this page, like similar when you've got like a, a front page or if you've got like a news page, like you have a little label by it, you now have a label 
It says um, privacy policy page. When you go to the page, this is on the classic editor. Um, you get a guide prompt, and this is this is equal to both when you create a page and if you assign a page to be your privacy policy. You get a little prompt that says you need help putting this together. Check out your guide for recommendations of what content to include, and there's a link going to the privacy policy guide. Um, the only difference is if you create a page and if you've already got a page assigned is if you create a page, those headers are automatically pasted below. Um, but if you've already got a page assigned, it's not. When you click on that link to go to the guide, you get taken to the privacy policy guide. This is like an introduction and it basically says, this is a bunch of headings and it kind of says, right, this is what you need to write for these sections. Um, you will need to write it. It's not boilerplated on the whole. Um, the reason being is that everybody's got different sites. You could have a, um, you know, you could have a Facebook pixel, pixel, which you'll need to account for. You could have a Google Analytics, which you'll need to account for. You could, you know, could have a Bitcoin miner. I don't know why you'd want to put one on your site, but you could have one. Um, but and you need to write sections for these for every single plug, uh, for every single thing that you have on the site. Now, WordPress does things that it knows what it's doing. So, so basically things like, when you log into your site, we put a cookie on your computer because that way you don't have to log into every single page, and things like that. Now, those, those things are kind of known, so there is, a, there is kind of boilerplated text. Now, if you're a plugin owner, or you write a plugin, you can actually add to this page. And you can do so. Um, by the way, this is all the code, but if you go to that link, um, and I'm putting the slides up after, so this is a code example. Um, so you can see this. So you can actually add to this page. So, for example, um, you can add to the admin init action, which is an action that runs on any admin page that's initiated. You can add a function. I've called my function WP email capture privacy policy content, and I've run it quite late. Um, this is just a very basic function that runs the WP underscore add underscore privacy underscore policy underscore content function. This function has two attributes, uh, the, the uh, parameter, sorry. The first parameter is the title. So if you want it to be a title on the page, this could be like a section. So in my case, it's WP email capture. Um, the second parameter is content, so this block here is just a block of text on what my plugin does and the data it collects, and you can add to the page. When you update to this version of my plugin, or if you add this to your plugin, you'll get a notification at the top of the page saying, the suggested privacy policy text has changed, please review it, which encourages the user to <coughs> review the page and to make changes. So you can see here, um, you see here, like the, the source WP and capture. That's the title, and underneath is the body. You can press copy, and you can copy it and paste it into your privacy policy. Second section is the user explore page, which is added in the tool section. It's called export personal data. When people make a request for data, they generally use a request such as your e email address or username, and then they click send request. An email gets sent to the username or email address, requiring confirmation. So you basically just say, hi, we've received this request for user export. Please confirm you are who you say you are um, to stop people making an erroneous request. Um, you got this next step. Once once they click the link, it's then this next step changed the waiting from confirmation to confirmed. Um, once confirmed, you can download the data um, and send it to them. Now you can actually download it before they're confirmed as well, but it's up to you. When you, when you download the data, you get a file that looks something like this. So this is like your personal data export, and it's basically all the data you have. So this is, this is run on my test site uh, with my email address, so everything associated with the email address. So you can see here at the bottom, I've uploaded a couple of images. They're assigned to my email address, that's data that they have, so yeah. Now, you can add to this page, and you can add to the export file. Um, to do this, you need a filter, which is WP Privacy Personal Data Exporters. 
Um, this filter is connected to an array which lists all the exporter functions. As it's an array, you can add to it. Uh, you can add to it um, an array with two keys, exporter friendly name. So this is like, in my case, it's WP Memo Capture, which basically says that if it goes wrong, you know where to look to kind of fix it. And it also adds callback, which is a callback function. And I'm going to apologize because the next slide is really complex. Um, so the callback function will be something like this. This is only part of it and then only part of the relevant part of it. Start off the callback function by grabbing your data. However you choose to do that, whether it's in a MySQL query, whether it's a, I mean, it could be in an API, however you choose to do it, you grab the data and you have it in whatever format you choose. You then need to put it into an array. So this is the data array uh, on the side. And this data array, you add two keys in an array, and it is, the first key is name, which is the name of the data, and the second key is value, which is the value of the data. So for example, if you have a Twitter handle, the name would be Twitter handle, the value would be at Reese or whatever. You then have this data row array. So this, this data array, sorry. You then put this into another array, which is called export items over here. Um, this has four attributes. Uh, first one is group ID, which is the group that you want to associate with this data. So it can be post, page, media, comment, whatever. Um, or you can give it your own. So in my case, it's WP email capture. The group label is a human readable name. So in my case, it's WP email capture data. An item ID, which is like um, a unique identifier for it, and all the data that you've created in the previous step. You then take that array and put it into another array, which is the data you return. Um, so this array has two attributes, uh, data, which is everything you've built up to this point, and done. Done is either true or false. So if you have a lot of data, you may want to kind of split this up into two or three different, um, two or three run-throughs. Uh, and if you return false, the function runs again. If you return true, goes on and does something else. Complex, I apologize, it's a lot easier from here on in. What you end up with is something that looks like this. So this is like, this is like the group label and this is like the group, the group um, ID. Uh, the left hand column is all the names and the right hand column is all the values associated with it. Use the deletion page. The user deletion page works very similar and has a very similar layout. What happens is a user will send an email, well, make a request to delete the data, and you give them either their username associated with it, with the data, or an email address. This then sends an email to the um, user, it says, hi, we've received a request to delete your data. Please confirm, they then confirm, and then you can then go ahead and delete the data. Again, you can delete it beforehand, but you probably don't want to do that. Similar to the exporters, you have an eraser, and you have a, you have a filter for erasing data, and that's WP underscore privacy underscore personal underscore data underscore erasers. This is an array of all erasing functions, so you can add to it. Similar to the exporter, this you add to it an array with two keys, erase a friendly name. So that's the name, so if something goes wrong, you can know where to look for debugging. And a callback function. So this is my callback function. In the callback function, uh, you build a function that deletes items from your database table. How would you choose to do it? Again, API, you know, WP query. SQL, however you choose to do it, so I'm not going to go into it. But when you have a query that runs, you return an array with four values. Now the thing is, because because there's no data return, you can't really return too much, but you, can, you have to return something. You return an array with four keys. 
items underscore removed is the number of items you removed. So this is like the, the road you removed. Items retained. Uh, items retained means that any data that you um, choose to retain for whatever reason, um, you can do so. I think, you, again, I'm not a lawyer, but I believe you need to retain sales records, for example, for something like this. Uh, messages, any messages you want to send, and a done filter. So if you need to run through this process three more times, pull false. If you only need to run through it once, return true. I race through this. <laughs> it's a unicorn. Um, right. A useful option is WP underscore page underscore for underscore privacy underscore policy. This is an ID for the privacy policy page. So if you need to in your plugin or theme link to it, use that ID and use a get permalink on that ID to return um, the the privacy policy your page. You cannot call if you choose to release your plugins on the WordPress.org repository, you cannot call them GDPR compliant. Um, the reason being was hypothetically speaking, this is a thought experiment, but you, if you had one plugin that makes your site GDPR compliant, which doesn't exist, but let's assume you can, and you are working in a laptop, you're working in a coffee shop with your laptop and you take a phone call and you leave your laptop open, all of a sudden, what was your, and you're working on your WordPress site and you're logged in, all of a sudden, that plugin can't do anything, really. So, you can't call the GDPR compliant. Um, what I use is compatible with WordPress's privacy features or GDPR friendlier or something like that. Um, I prefer using the compatible with WordPress's GDPR or privacy features. Um, that doesn't mean you shouldn't do this. Um, taking away the moral and the legal reasons for, for doing these, this, this sort of work, it's actually when I introduce this into my plugin, from a business standpoint, I had a number of people who turned, who switched from other people's plugins to mine. Um, not everybody does this either, through the fact that the plugin's <coughs> abandoned, or you know they have rare reasons for not doing it. If you can do this, you open up a new market, particularly a European focus market, to to your features, which is great, and get more customers. And further reading is available at developers.wordpress.org forward slash plugins forward slash privacy. There's a lot of really, really useful examples on this. I have raced through that. Diochabal, thank you very much, and I'm happy to take a few questions. <laughs> This is not specifically about your, your mm -hmm. application, but the privacy stuff, you mentioned like a, a user would submit a request to delete or yeah. to uh, access the information. How would they do that? Is um, there a front end? Yeah, I mean, well, I mean generally, I would assume just like a contact form. Right, so, so a built in core way that, 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 that like, puts a form there that allows I, you to do that. I don't think there is, to the best of my knowledge. Um, I would do, um, I'd just, if you put in your privacy policy, I'm assuming, yeah. um, if you if you want to put a request in, either email this, I mean this, this is more for stuff that I've done outside of this, this is for client stuff, is when they've rewritten the privacy policy, they've usually included an email address yeah. in it, which they email. Privacy afterward. Yeah. That's pretty normal. In terms of, um Data deletion. Is there any move from WordPress to give us functionality to do automated housekeeping by having expiry dates against the data? That's more. Uh, I don't it's a it's a very open-ended question because there's no one kind of data. Yeah. No, but to give us the opportunity to against. So maybe I keep your data for five years and yours for seven years. So Again, and also it's granular, so you may have yeah. multiple pieces of data in a single record, which mm. would have different 
completion dates. One thing we're looking at is putting a, did we do this? I don't remember if we did this, but putting, um, obfuscating the personal data out of comments after, I think their default mm. time was six months, so that after six months it's just the name, it's mm. not the IP address. Um, if you'd like us to build that functionality for certain things, we can look at that, but because it's so granular, it's really difficult to provide a one-size-fits-all mm. situation. Yeah. So it almost becomes, this is why Reese's talk was so, so valuable, because he's showing how he put that into one specific plugin for one specific purpose, mm. as opposed to trying to create some sort of universal functionality. Yeah. Yeah. So if there's any specific, specific user case you need it for, I'd love to hear about it. Mm. Looking like medical records, there's yeah. lots of like small businesses, yeah. and I know that they're going through their metal filing cabinets Absolutely. after so many years and pulling them not out and thinking, time. well, you know, could we not do something for them? Yeah. And you know, it'd be specific to them, yeah. so they could put their own time scale on. But yeah, it's, and it's, that's, but again, that's assuming that all the records that you need to delete live within a WordPress database. Yeah, exactly. So it's, exactly. Yeah, it's yeah. A really difficult. Yeah, it's not. Thing. It's not an easy. Um, Thing so what we're doing in, in the core privacy team is we're encouraging people to come to us with these specific cases, like tell us what we need to build, because mm. we're very much working off of a theoretical and very knowledgeable basis, but what we're missing is people saying, like, right, right. I have X plugin that does X, help me with this, so yeah. Yeah, please come to us with that. One thing I do, um, <clears throat> when I talked about scrapping the, the work that I'd already done, I did actually keep some of it. Um, and one of the features I did keep was the automatic deletion of the um, of the uh, of record. So basically, the way in which my plugin works is it stores data in one table that, and then moves it to another table um, once it's uh, you know once, once people have confirmed. When it's in the first table, um, I put in I've put in something in my plugin that basically once every day I think it does it deletes data that's older than three months because the chances are they're not going to click on it yeah so for, for something like that I built I kept that um, which is just a very very simple function you can write it yourself but again that's because I know the data I'm working with yeah and I know what to do with it so that's why Any, Any other general privacy questions? Sorry, yeah, so just a quick question. Um, that bit of code that you kept, yeah. would it be possible to um, abstract that so that, say, I could say, now that I know what data I'm working with, the law says I need to keep it for five years, and then I can just say, all right, select five, five years, and then it will run once every day to check. Oh, it, how old is this data? Oh, it's five years old now. Then, it, then it's just expunges that. Yeah, uh, it would be possible. Um, it, to be honest, it, 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 it's fairly simple. So it's one of those things where it's like, if I, because it's because it's like it's specifically designed for my plugin. It's actually really, really kind of it's about four or five lines of code. Um, just open the database, check check a date record, and, and things like that. Um, <coughs> It depends again. The, the thing is, though, because I know that there's a date record in my table, so I know this is this is where to go from. Um, once people will store data, people will store dates in various different formats. Some people will store it in a text field. Some people will store it as a as a proper date time object and things like that. So it will be kind of tricky to kind of do it. But so this is this is why I kind of say, I mean. I can put it up and, and you can you can see it and, and, and start from there, that's, that's not a problem, but it's, it's quite tricky to generalise it because of that off the top of my head. But uh, I, I, I can certainly show you it and, and if, if, you, if you want to see it. Yeah, I was just going to say that, you know, because you've already done it, it might be a great, like, template is not the correct word, but something that people can look at and be like, oh, maybe I should just... Yeah, make sure that I'm storing my dates correctly so that I can check them. Yeah, properly. It, I mean, within this is bec I mean, for my plugin, I had to go in when I update when I release this version. I actually added the date column because it wasn't there to begin with. It well, it was in one of the tables. It wasn't in the other. So I actually did that retrospectively, kind of thing. Um, yeah, I mean, store dates is proper daytime objects and that way it's a lot easier to, to work with and manipulate and, and everything. Well, it seems we've got a few minutes, can you do a live demonstration of it? I'll 
I'll have to see. <laughs> no uh, pressure, Reese. Okay. <laughs> um, so, so what do you want? So, what do you want a live demonstration? Just, just what you were talking about. Yeah. Sorry, we set for time. We've got about ten minutes, I think. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Don't normally go around dressed like this, by the way. We've got David in here at twelve, so we do have a wee bit of time. Okay. Um, yeah, I'd rather you actually do a live demo than talk about the background image again. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, he's going to talk about it. Can I just uh, just add a comment about time? I'm, I'm not a Doctor Who fan, um, and this is all new to me. So, in my world, uh, data has to be held for the only amount of time. Yes, that's all of our world now. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, yeah, probably before that, oh, seven years, five years, and lots of paper. So mm -hmm. things can change if you, know, you have to get rid of it after you stop using it. Uh, I'm not. I don't know mask in here or it's not solution to so, it's just a point to be able to So there's there's no throwing out the baby with the bath water is or is it the other way around? Bath water. Any any data that you are obliged to keep for any other statutory reason does not have to be wiped out. That's one of the most commonly that that's the two most commonly misunderstood aspects of the right to be forgotten. Or number two, you have to delete everything. And number two, it is a universal right. No, it's the right to oppress it. Um, the right what I always tell people is the right to be forgotten is not the right to fly under the radar. So, for example, you have to keep seven years of purchasing sales records for tax purposes. It's even more, I think in Italy it's 10 years. You, so the, tri the challenge for us is how do you come up with a means of deleting the information you don't have to keep, which frankly shouldn't be on your database, and keep, still keep those records you need for other statutory purposes. Other thing is like, if you've got like, um, someone who's abusing the system, trying to hack in or whatever, you don't have to delete that record. So there's no black and white binary keep or delete. Be aware of what information and data you have to keep for statutory purposes. And then what the ICO would like to see is that you come up with a data retention and deletion schedule for everything you hold. How you define how long you keep that data, it's entirely up to you, as long as you can document and justify it. If you say we keep all uh, contact form submissions for a year, for X, Y, and Z reasons, that's fine, as long as you can justify it. What they're looking for is people who have, um, you know, the, the proper for case I always talk about in the conference speaking, the, the charity that had five years of contact form submissions of people's sensitive medical data on the website database, hacked. You know, there's no reason for any of that, those forms to be there for more than six weeks. They had five years worth, so it's 5,000 confidential medical records leaked. As long as you can explain and justify why you're doing things, they're fine with that. But as I, I always advise people, make sure it passes the laugh test. You know, if, if your explanation would make someone laugh at you, you need to go back and revise it. Nobody should be surprised what you've got. Nobody should be surprised what they've got. Um, and this is one of the really healthy things that I've found in all the GDPR work I've done. It's making people go back and say, okay, what do we have? Where do we have it? Oh my God, we've got, you know, zip drives. We've got paper files. Um, I love this giant purge that's happened in the past six months of like completely useless paper and terabytes of outdated data that just didn't have to be there. I suddenly get why the, uh, why the, why, because I've been working away and I've just been like, yes. yes. Okay. Five minutes till we So, very, very quickly. So when you log into my plugin, um, you, there's a box here called enable GDPR settings. This is all the features that I've kept. Um, I've put a privacy policy thing in here, which is basically replicated on the privacy policy uh, section. So I've got a thing here which says how long you want to keep the data on your server. Um, so for example, the 10 days. Now you see here, I've signed up to this email address. This email address has probably been, it's longer than 10 days ago. So in theory, that should, well it won't delete actually, um, because it needs to run, uh, it needs to run <coughs> once per hour. So, what will happen will be, at some point, that will be deleted within the next hour or so. As in the code, the code is run in this line here, which is an hourly function. So this is like a cron job that runs once an hour, and this is a GDPR. So if you email capture GDPR deletion. Um, when you go to it, this is the function that kind of runs. Oh, is there a way you can... Hang on. I'm still I'm still fairly new with uh, okay, right. So 
basically this is a function that runs every hour. Um, if the GDPR features are enabled, uh, you get the unit. The unit is days, weeks, months, or whatever, and the number is the ten that I put there. It then says, well, basically, if the if we have a unit, so it's present, and the number is more than zero, uh, we grab the time string, uh, which converts it from. Uh, so basically, we, we we get the time of now, and we get uh, we convert it into the MySQL day format, which is year, month, day, hours, minutes, seconds. It then runs uh, a couple of SQL queries, which is basically delete from the temp members table and the racist member table, where the date is uh, less than what the date is. Um, and it just runs those queries, and that's all it does. <laughs> that, 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 that's, that's pretty much the, what, what I do, um, because as I said, this is, this is built for this purpose or anything like that. Um, Sorry, is that, is that just a normal WordPress Chrome job? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I mean, caveats when it comes to WordPress Chrome jobs is that it doesn't necessarily run every hour because it runs when pages or updates and things like that. Um, Last thing I'll say before I make you wrap up is yeah. that we're actually that slide or the the page with all the developer tools. Yeah. Um, instructions. We're looking at that like yeah. this month. We're going to give it a fresh look. Yeah. Because we haven't really looked at it in, in six yeah. months. We, we get pushed everything out for GDPR. Now that we're more moving into V2, we're going to have a look. And if there's anything you need as a developer or you need that you want to, yeah. us to put in there, please let us know. Yeah. We're going to help. Yeah. Thank okay. you ever so much. Yeah. I'll, I'll tweet that slide and everything. So next